Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Carmichael Presbyterian Church and a happy Dad's Day to everyone. Uh, good to see you all here with us in worship. I'm Pastor Keith DeVries and it's always my joy and privilege uh, to join with you as we worship our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, please, if you didn't take a minute to sign in, sign in as you leave today. Uh, for those of you at home, welcome. Good to have you with us as well. And at home, you can also check in with your attendance, and you'll see a couple of spots where you can register, either in the bulletin or in the parish notes. And uh, we hope that you will check in and register there as well so that we know the entirety of the community of faith that is worshiping with us today. Let me just bring your attention to a few announcements in the life of the church. Uh, first is we will be having a coffee fellowship after worship today. It'll be in the gathering place. So we encourage you to find your way over there in the building just adjacent to the sanctuary as we continue to fellowship together as God's people. Um, the flowers today. We've got some beautiful flowers here today. There's this newlywed couple uh, that purchased these flowers, Dick and Charlotte Frank. They've only been married about 67 years. Um, but they're in worship with us today. And uh, congratulations on 67 years. And uh, we, we were grateful for your presence with us and for sharing the beautiful flowers with us on the occasion last Sunday of your 67th wedding anniversary. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, <clears throat> want to also draw your attention to a couple other announcements. Um, we have our Opportunity Knox table that will be set up in the gathering place, and that provides you an opportunity to discover, to find new ways to be involved here at Carmichael Presbyterian Church so please find your way to that table and see how you can plug in in some new and exciting ways. Uh, you'll also see an announcement for food closet volunteers that are needed, uh, so please pay attention to that. And also, um, yesterday, last evening, um, Kathy Lewis was in attendance at an event at uh, Gibbons Park where they kind of recognize those different uh, services in the community. And um, lo and behold, Carmichael Presbyterian Church was awarded the best place of worship in Carmichael for 2022. Isn't that great? So it's nice to know um, that folks out there recognize what you're doing in the ministry and the mission of this congregation in the name of Jesus Christ and how we reach out and actively participate in the community. And uh, folks see that. And they recognize it, and they appreciate it, and once again voted us the best place of worship. So congratulations to all of you um, and for your uh, many, many efforts. And I'm sure that will spur you on to really check in with that Opportunity Knox table and find out new ways that you can be involved and reach out into the community here of Carmichael. I now want to invite Kathy Lewin, uh, moderator of our deacons, to come forward. She's got a moment for CPC. Kathy? Good morning, everybody. So wonderful to see you. Happy Father's Day to every father in this room and live streaming. Congratulations. You live to tell the tale. The pandemic has put many of our outreach programs on hold. With our gradual reopening, we've been asking committee members to return to these tasks. We have found that many people that were assigned to these duties have since stepped down, leaving only a few to do the jobs that several had done before. To that end, we're asking you, the members of CPC, to consider being a part of the usher team and or transportation team. Being an usher is a great way to connect with and get to know better our many faithful members. It's usually only once every two months. We will give you simple instructions on what's involved. Offering a ride to someone who would like to come to church but doesn't have transportation is another way to connect with members in a re very real giving and meaningful way. And as Keith mentioned, we have opportunity knocks and we know that you are all gonna wanna participate in an even greater way in ways to help 
connect with the membership and connect with our community and let everybody know that CPC is just really the best church in Carmichael. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. And now I'd like to introduce Ann Parker, uh, elder on session, to lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. When forces in the world threaten us, when our bodies or spirits turn against us, there is one who seeks us, one, one who, who meets, meets us, us, one who heals us, whose love washes over us and sets us free for joy. This one is the Lord. Come, let us worship God. now the confession and pardon. The geography of sin is a waterless waste, but God gives springs of living water, streams of justice and mercy splashing into the wilderness from the mountain of God. Let us drink deeply of Christ. Let us confess our sins. Holy One, God most high, Grant us faith to confess our sins and seek your mercy. There are barren places in our lives where we have wandered far from you. We have listened to voices 
who distracted us from your call. We have submitted to powers competing for our loyalty to you. We have not taken the hand you offered to lead us out of God-forsakenness and into your holy ways. God, our Savior, forgive us. Quench our thirst for you from the rock of our salvation and let your love well up in us unto eternal life. Speak tenderly to us of your presence. Feed us with your word. Deliver us from evil. Let us enter into your kingdom. Then send us out to serve you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Christ Jesus is the bread of life. Manna, come down from heaven. Christ covers us with baptismal waters so that our lives are hidden in him. This Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, is sovereign even over the powers of evil so that his reign brings freedom and joy. Therefore, I declare to you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. I'd like to invite my young friends forward to come sit on the steps with me up here. Those of my young friends that are home, uh, tune in wherever you are, on the couch, the chair, the table. Um, it's uh, good to have you up here. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, good. So, oh, hey, there we go. There we go. All the brothers are joining. Thank you. All right. Hey, um, what's going on today? Anything going on in your world today? Anything special? I woke up late. You woke up late. Why was that? Did you go to bed too late? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that explains that. That's it? That's what happened special today. You woke up late. Okay, what about you? Um, Got any plans? No. No? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Okay. On Monday, we're going to do something with one of our aunts. Oh, you're going to do something with one of your aunts on Monday. Okay. How about you? I don't want to wake up. You didn't want to wake up? Oh, you were like sawn logs. You were just sleeping. Oh, I know sometimes it's... I feel the same way. It's sometimes hard to get up. Yeah. Well, if you find time to spend, you know, with dad or anything today, you might do that, right? Just, you know, say a nice thing. Anybody get breakfast in bed today? See, this is the deal. On mom's day, mom's, uh, hands go up, people get breakfast in bed, it's all great. But not so much on dad's day. I don't get that. Oh, well. Hey, so I thought we'd talk for a minute about things that are different about all of us in this room, in this sanctuary. So I want you to look around, look at each other, and I want you to tell me some things that are different about you and everybody else, okay? So what, what do you see that's different, uh, somebody different? We're not the same. We're not the same, but what's different about us that's not the same? What do you see out there, somebody that's different than you? You know, how about um, hair color? So, so what color is your hair? Brown. Brown, okay. Do you see other people out there with different colored hair? Right. A lot of kind of light, lighter colored shades. <laughs> Wasn't that nice of me? I thought that was really nice. Now, I used to have really fiery red hair. And now I just want to say it's a little less red. Yeah, so that's different. Okay, what else is different about you and folks out there? What? There's a lot of different ages. That is such a nice thing to say. That's right. There are. 
So you look here, we got, except for the one speaking, we have some very young people here, right? That's right. And then we look out there and we have some not quite as young people. <laughs> yeah, okay, see, that's another nice way to say things. Okay, um, what about, oh, I see your dad. He's standing up there. He's kind of a really tall kind of guy, isn't he? Yeah, okay. And then I see your mom. She's up there too, right? She's a little less tall. Yeah, okay. So there's, there's again, there's some differences, right? So yeah, so there are a lot of things are different about us. Um, I thought I'd bring something here. Help me with my, make my point. Oh, there we go. Crayons. Well, one or two is. So what do I have here? What's, the, what's different about these things? They're different colors. They're different colors. But other than that, is there anything else that's different about them? They smell. They smell the same. They're all made of the same kind of ingredient, kind of a paraffin wax thing. Um, they're all by the same brand, right? And you know, they're all, they're different colors, that's about all, but they all break about the same, right? So, there are a lot of, there are different colors, all kinds of different colors. Why did you break the point? Why did, I know I broke it, I know. Why did I, I was just making my point, see, and you see inside there, what? No, no, they're not sharp. They still work, right? And then inside you see the wax, but it's diff all different use colors. Oh, you use crayons to make purple candles. Sure, okay, do you melt them? That's good, yeah. So, the reason I want to talk, this is kind of like that we as Christians, there are a lot of differences out here, right? We look different, we're different ages, different colored hair, uh, tall, short, but as Christians, we're also all the same. It's kind of like these crayons. We're all the same in that we are united in Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm going to be reading about today from Galatians. Paul is telling the Christians in Galatia that even though they're different, in different ages, different heights, different colors, even though they're different, they're also one, of one substance with Jesus Christ. And so when we think about our differences, we are, and we are different, no question about it, but the thing that's more important is that we're all one because we all worship Jesus Christ. And that's the thing to always remember, okay? All right. Hey, thanks a lot for helping me out. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats with your families. Thank you very much. Please stand in body or spirit and join me in singing as the deer.
Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, beginning with verse 23. Hear now these words from Paul who tells the Galatians that it's not what makes us different that defines us, it's who we are in our relationship with Jesus Christ that defines us. Hear now God's word to us. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Ten years ago, next month, Jenny and I traveled with friends to France. One of the many museums we visited while we were there was the Musée de la Tapisserie de Bayeux, the Bayeux Museum, which features this amazing tapestry depicting the events leading up to the Norman conquest of England in 1066. Now, tapestry is defined as a fabric consisting of various colors of threads woven together in order to produce a certain design or image. The Bayou Tapestry is some 230 feet long and 20 inches tall and consists of some 70 scenes that tell this story from the point of view of the conquering Normans. It may have been completed in 1077 in time for the dedication of the newly constructed Bayou Cathedral. It is a very, very impressive work of art. The word tapestry can also be used to describe a colorful or complicated situation. Some have even used this word to describe life in communities of faith. Colorful, complicated, not all of one mind, not unlike this community of faith. And yet, we are all God's children, as Paul passionately proclaims that we are one in Christ Jesus. You might say that we resemble a tapestry as we have been woven together into a single design on one piece of fabric reflecting our oneness in Christ. This is indeed Paul's vision for the church that all nations, that all peoples in their God-given distinctiveness will praise God with one voice. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Galatians that God's act of grace in Jesus Christ has broken down the barriers of race, gender, social class, and privilege. All social distinctions are obliterated as they, as we, are united with one voice in bearing witness to our new life in Jesus Christ. In this text, we discover the absolute magnitude of God's grace that truly extends to all. Now, this is no small claim and no less radical today than it was over 2,000 years ago as the church had very heated arguments and debates over whether or not to include Gentiles in their community. In the Jewish culture of the day, uh, Gentile referred to the other, the outsider, those who are not a part of the Jewish family. Gentile being shorthand for all other nations outside of Israel. So Paul's writing in verse 28 addresses the three fundamental anthropological divisions known to the world. Jew or Greek identifies the world along ethnic religious lines, dividing those who are within one's own circle from those who are 
outside. Slave or free identifies the world along socioeconomic lines, dividing those who possessed a measure of freedom from those who possessed very little or none at all. Male and female identifies divisions along gender lines. These relationships that once contain power dynamics, division, and strife have now become relationships of mutual blessing in the church. Carla Works comments that, quote, in Christ, the Galatians experienced the work of the Spirit, molding them, shaping them into a new creation, into people who exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And yet the church today, more than 2,000 years later, continues to be troubled by these words of inclusion in Paul's letter. Now, we all live in this country, right? A country that for some reason has not been able to come up with an agreement on immigration policy in which Paul says, there is neither native born nor illegal immigrant. We live in a country that is dramatically divided by income. And Paul says, there is neither moneyed, nor working class, nor poor. We live in a society that continues to be polarized by race. And Paul says, there are neither a people of color, nor people of no color. We live in a democratic society where everyone is encouraged to vote. And Paul says, there is neither Republican, nor Democrat, nor independent. We live in a society that continues to divide according to gender, to which Paul says, for you are all one in Christ. The church, not unlike this country we live in, is a tapestry, a melting pot, a very complicated and messy gathering of people from across a wide spectrum. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul reframes the conversation by reminding them that in Christ, something extraordinary has taken place. Barriers have come down. Old divisions have been obliterated and all become heirs to God's promises manifest in Jesus Christ. Paul says that when we clothe ourselves with Christ, something surprising happens. And even the most basic human distinctions break down. We discover that we must put aside our preoccupation with the individual and relearn that when we are clothed with Christ, we find our true identity in being a member of the family of God and the community of faith. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is this. Is there room in our hearts and in our lives for inclusion? The image of a tapestry strikes this chord for me, this intricate textile art, generally woven on a loom and comprised of various types of threads and colors. The broader definition is stated this way, a textile fabric decorated with designs of ornament or pictorial subjects painted embroidered or woven in colors, used for wall hangings, curtains, and covers for chairs. So that's his very broad definition. The Bayou tapestry that I mentioned earlier falls within this broad definition. I like to think of all of us, the church, as a tapestry, this colorful mix of individuals that make up a beautiful design. These different types of threads and colors all brought together by the artist to form this work of art reflecting our collective oneness in Christ. The question that this image poses for me is this. Do we have room in our hearts for more threads of different types and colors? Can they be added to the design and hence to our oneness in Christ? Now, our church mission statement says, quote, responding to God's love through Jesus Christ, we, and then the very first bullet says, we welcome all. We 
welcome all. That as a congregation, we seek to include all. That we are many different threads of many different colors, all woven together by this master artist, Jesus Christ. This is how we seek to express our oneness in Christ that Paul speaks of in his letter to the Galatians. But are we always successful? Sometimes this wall hanging we call church can get worn out or no longer appreciated for its beautiful design. Sometimes we even seek to limit different colors and types of threads because it is just easier and less exhausting. We become content with the fabric the way it is, knowing that by adding more colors and types of thread, it might change the design to look a little different. And that is when we start to forget what Paul said, that the divisions of insider and outsider, of economics and gender, have all given way to this rich tapestry of colors and types that have become one beautiful design in Christ in all of our unified differences. Christ has the power to reconcile all things, And Christ is able with God to make one body out of an infinitely varied tapestry of believers, just like you and me. So where is the church today that attempts to live out this vision? Where is the church that says all means all? Can we be that church? I believe that we can. I believe that we must if we are to thrive in the next century of our common life and ministry together as God's people here at Carmichael Presbyterian Church. May it be so. Amen and amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for Paul's words, for his reminder that our identity is in you, that we are all one in our relationship with you. And all other differences, of which there are many, are of no consequence other than being in relationship with you. So bless us, O Lord, in that work. Bless us as we are a part of that tapestry woven together. And bless us as we include others to be a part of this tapestry of faith and witness and life in you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in singing or join us in singing for these reasons. And I would like to let you know that the verse part of the song is a call and response. And Julie will be doing the call and the rest of us will all be doing the response. So just follow what she does.
with gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, we now come to this time to present our gifts, our gifts of time, our energy, our gift of prayer, gifts of worship, and our gifts of financial resources. So let us come to this time of offering you. There are a variety of ways in which you can give. Two of the, or one of those ways here in the sanctuary today is with the offering box here in the front or one also in the narthex. So let us pray together. O God, with faith and hope, we offer these our gifts. Use them, even as you use us, to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ, the head of the church and Lord of our lives. And we ask it in his name. Amen. Kathy Lewin's going to help me distribute amongst us um, some of our prayer shawls. Um, we're going to have a blessing of those. Uh, so Kathy, go ahead and grab some of those. Leave one for me. I'll grab one. And uh, we'll just hand them out to folks. We'll see the newlyweds. They get one. <laughs> Let's see. Marie, I'll give one to you. I'm going to keep this one for me. Just distribute them to folks. Just hand them out. Anybody who'd like one. And again, you, you, you do have to return these. <laughs> but we want you to touch them, feel them, and have them with you when we say a prayer over them. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to take mine. Well, not mine, but I have one, actually. How many of you have prayer shawls? Look at that. That's great. That is wonderful. Yeah, I, you know, this has just been this blessed ministry in our church. Debbie Berkey got this started, planted the seed. How long ago, Debbie? A long time, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, okay, you don't have to be, yeah. It, but it's been something, we'll say, in the last two decades. Uh, yeah, there we go, that's the perimeters. Um, it's been a really important ministry. And uh, folks gather together um, every month uh, and at other times, and they pray while they're knitting, crocheting these prayer shawls. The whole intent of this is that when someone is in need, whether it be physical or emotional or spiritual, they have a time in their life that they need prayer, we give to you a prayer shawl, a reminder, a tangible reminder of God's enveloping grace and love and that you are surrounded by the prayers of God's people in this place. And that is such a tremendous, tremendous gift. Um, and as all, so many of you raised your hands. So many of you have received that gift, and you possibly will in the future as well. And it's not just limited to folks that are members of CPC. It's members, it's friends, it's family. Um, it's wherever the need is for folks to know that they're being prayed for and to be in prayer, a prayer shawl is made available. So the ones that you have before you today will find their way into other homes and others' lives. Uh, in the coming weeks, months uh, ahead of us. But I'd like to offer now a prayer blessing upon this ministry, uh, upon the, the prayer shawls that are before you and some of those of which you have in your hands. So let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you for the invitation to pray. Thank you for those who have shared their gift of knitting and crocheting, of creating these prayer shawls all the time while they're praying and sharing their faith with others. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for those who have given that gift through these shawls to so many in need. So bless their work, their gifts, and bless these prayer shawls to be a vivid and tangible reminder of your grace and that you indeed hear and answer our prayers. And we ask and pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, just when you, as you walk out, uh, just place them on a, a chair here if you have them with you, and, and um, that would be great, and we'd appreciate that. I would now like to invite you all to rise in body or spirit as you are able. We stand in memory and in honor of Mary Torgerson. Mary passed away yesterday morning. Um, 
She had been surrounded uh, with a parade of family uh, over the last couple of weeks um, and had family with her uh, when she passed yesterday morning. Uh, Mary Torgerson and her husband, Daryl, who died a couple of years ago, um, stalwarts of the church, um, members for six decades, um, raised their family in this church. Mary was a very active choir member, very active in pinafores, um, very much a part of the fabric of CPC and what makes this congregation such a wonderful community of faith. So we want to pray for Mary's family. Um, her uh, kids, grandkids, uh, pray that you would, they would be surrounded in the love and the prayers of this faith community as they remember, as they celebrate her life, and as they prepare in the coming weeks uh, to hold memorial services. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. <clears throat> I want to also call to your attention <clears throat> some other uh, prayers that we need to lift on behalf of the folks in our midst. Uh, we pray for Lee Paxton. Uh, I think we told you last week that Lee had a stroke. He was in the hospital. Uh, he's now in a rehab facility. And Bonnie said he's working hard and making progress. So that's good news. But we want to continue to pray for Lee, uh, for his healing and wholeness. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me for a minute. Here we go. <clears throat> We want to pray for Bob Becker today. Bob uh, is home now after having a successful knee replacement surgery, and uh, we pray for his continued recovery and healing. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We want to pray for Gail Litt's daughter, Megan. Gail has been kind of our interim music leader. There she is. We, I think we told you last Sunday that uh, her daughter, Megan, was in a motorcycle accident. Um, a, a fairly serious one. She's home, uh, she's improving, but she's been dealing with the after effects of concussions, and she has to have an additional follow-up surgery this Wednesday. So we pray for her ongoing care. It's, it's going to be a long haul for her, and we pray for successful surgery on Wednesday. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Ellie Crispel and her son Peter, uh, both of which have tested positive for COVID and are symptomatic. And so we pray for their well-being, their healing, and we are reminded that we are still living with COVID, and it is something that's still impacting our community and the lives that we lead. And so we pray for Ellie and her son Peter, and this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also want to pray for uh, Rachel Ratliff Carter. Rachel's a former director of our preschool, and she was hospitalized with COVID, but now is home. So she's improving we want to continue to pray for her well-being and her recovery. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Bill Ballantyne, who was in the hospital as well uh, with various uh, health concerns, but is now home. So we pray for his well-being and strength. And this is our prayer to the Lord. We want to pray for Gail Bichot's uh, boyfriend, uh, Jimmy Stroud. Um, Gail is Gabe's mom, and uh, her boyfriend, Jimmy, is in the ER in serious condition. And so we just want to pray for Jimmy, uh, for his healing and recovery, but we all want to lift up and pray for Gail, who is by his side, and for comfort and strength for her. And so this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We also want to be in prayer for the Bergston family. Uh, Bob is here today as services for Shar and for Laura are gonna happen in the sanctuary here on Friday. And we wanna pray for the Seeger family as they will be gathering together this next Sunday afternoon for services for Dave. And we pray for both of you and your families uh, that you may be surrounded with our prayers. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And finally, lift up Pastor Ivan and family that you don't see him here today. Uh, they took off for a conference in Montreat uh, worship conference they're going to be attending this week and the following week they're going to be spending time with family so we pray for safety and travels a wonderful conference experience and for a joyous reunion with family and this is our prayer to the lord lord hear our prayers 
Let us now unite our hearts in this time of prayer. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God of earth and sky, in your presence mountains quake, flames tremble, and the winds roar. Hallelujah. We pray for the coming of your kingdom. Let the earth be made whole and new. Let the sky be made clean and refreshed. May all who dwell in heaven and throughout the world be joined in giving you praise. We pray for the nation and peoples of the world. Let us receive your reign with gladness. Grant world leaders wisdom and humility that they may guide your flocks in the ways that make for peace. Give us ears to attend to the voices of poets and prophets through whom your spirit speaks. We pray for the most vulnerable, for creatures threatened with extinction, for those of the human family who are poor, homeless, or refugees, victims of political or domestic violence, those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Grant us compassionate hearts, inspired minds, and wills resolved to care for our neighbors with the love of Christ Jesus. When you bring your promised kingdom, all your creatures will shout glory. All your people will sigh love. And all creation will sing together hallelujah. With hallelujah on our lips, let us now unite our voices in that prayer that Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing to God be the glory. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. 
go forth from this place as God's people, a rich and varied tapestry of individuals that are all one in Jesus Christ. May we together bear witness to that oneness as we bear witness to our Lord and Savior. And now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen.